machine. Since electricity and magnetism are really just two forms of the same thing, a magnet can affect the electrical signals in your brain. Now this is your brain. It's basically an electric web of billions of neurons wired together. When a strong magnetic pulse hits these neurons, it alters their electric current. The process is called transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS. Electricity is the currency of the brain. All thoughts, all beliefs, all actions are just electrical impulses. And so TMS, we're actually able to get in there and influence the currency of the brain focally and non-invasively. The stronger the magnetic pulse, the deeper into the brain it goes. And by adjusting the pattern of the pulse, you can change the way that part of the brain functions. We can turn a part of the brain up or down or temporarily turn it off. It doesn't take a genius to see that it should be a pretty fertile way to begin to understand how the brain works. One mystery George wanted to decipher was how the brain processes pain. For example, when marathon runners are injured during a race, they might not even feel it. What's happening in the brain to mask that pain? You know, it's very common if you're in the middle of a great sports event and you twist your ankle, you will not feel that pain until after the event. When you injure your ankle, pain signals are sent through the nervous system to the sensory cortex. But researchers suspected that an area called the prefrontal cortex, the thinking part of your brain, also plays a key role in your perception of pain. George set out to test this idea with TMS. He asked 40 people who were having stomach surgery to take part in a study. So what we decided to do was to grab them the first opportunity that we could, that is when they come right out of the operating room, and we would just apply a 20-minute session of TMS and then walk away. What we chose to do was to position the coil really right in the center of the part of the cortex that we thought mattered and then see if we got an effect. Next, they needed to monitor each person's pain threshold to see if TMS had had an effect. They found an unlikely measuring stick, the morphine pump. By counting how many times a patient released this pain relief medicine, they kept tabs on how much pain she could take. Half the patients received real TMS to their prefrontal cortex. The other half received a fake charge that would have no effect on the brain. If the TMS worked, the patients who received the real TMS would press the pump fewer times. And surprisingly, in two studies now, it essentially cuts their need for anti-pain medicines, cuts it in half for the next day, which is a whopping clinical effect. The results suggest that this one small area in the prefrontal cortex may indeed play a key role in how we feel pain. TMS not only can reduce physical pain, there's strong evidence it can treat emotional pain too. For decades, doctors have treated clinical depression with electroconvulsive therapy, an intense charge that throws the entire brain into seizure. But researchers believe TMS could offer a less extreme alternative. They propose that clinical depression might be caused when the prefrontal cortex lets negative emotions get out of control. So they decided to use TMS to try to stimulate the prefrontal cortex and get it to do its job. So my thought was that by persistent, daily, repeated, subtle switching of the prefrontal cortex circuitry, could somehow reset that system. That's sort of similar to what happens when you jumpstart your car. George recruited 190 patients, people who had suffered through years of depression and tried everything from therapy to medication with no success. Every weekday for six weeks in a double-blind study, doctors gave the patient 38-minute treatments of TMS TMS did not work for everyone. For a third of people, it did little or nothing. For another third, it helped some. And for the remaining people? About one third of the people that got this kind of a treatment over four to six weeks um, remitted. That is, all of their depression symptoms went away. 
Today, over 200 clinics use TMS to treat depression when medications fail and before a patient undergoes electroconvulsive therapy. But TMS is perhaps most powerful as a research tool, not just to alter how we feel, but to affect the way we think. Dr. Pasquale Leone teamed up with MIT neuroscientist Rebecca Sachs to study how the brain judges right and wrong. Delicious mushroom or just to cause... The first step was to come up with stories, some of them pretty horrifying. Our stories have dozens of different ways that one person could hurt another person. We just sit around the lab making up different ways people could attempt to kill each other. Stories like this one. Teddy and his twin brother Freddy work in a chemistry lab. When Teddy goes to pour some coffee for both of them, Freddy asks for sugar in his. Next to the coffee machine, there is a white powder in a container labeled toxic. So Teddy believes the powder is a toxic substance left behind by some other scientist. Teddy pours the substance into Freddy's coffee. And Freddy drinks it. However, the substance was really sugar, so Freddy is fine. On a scale of one to seven, one being completely okay, seven not at all okay, rate Teddy's behavior. So what does the average guy in the street make of this story? Oh, I'd say seven. Seven? Yeah. That's, that's pretty harsh. Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's had poison toxic on it, right? Evil intent. You're giving it then a score of? Seven. Researchers believe that these harsh judgments are based on people's belief that Teddy intended to hurt his brother and that there's a specific part of the brain called the right temporoparietal junction, or RTPJ, that judges intentions. On this brain, it would be about here. On you, it would be above and behind your right ear. What would happen if TMS turned down this part of the brain? We predicted that if we could interfere with neural activity in the right TPJ, we would be able to change people's moral judgments. In this experiment, 20 subjects read 48 morality tales, like the one about Teddy and Freddy, and then type in a score. The scientists believe that shutting down the RTPJ will make people focus less on Teddy's intentions. And just when you get to the point that Teddy gives Freddy the coffee with the powder in it, and we ask you, was that morally wrong? Just at that point, we give you a really brief pulse of TMS into your RTPJ. So after going under the wand, what do people think about Teddy, the evil twin chemist? What we found is that people who are having TMS to their right TPJ make moral judgments that depend less on the person's beliefs and intentions. Which means someone who had TMS was less likely to judge Teddy harshly, even though he tried to poison his brother. They still thought it was wrong. They, just they still thought, thought it was wrong. Eh, it was just succeed. less wrong. Nothing bad happened after all. Boys will be boys, they thought. <laughs> Scientists believe that TMS will continue to unlock the mysteries of how the brain works, how it breaks, and how to fix it. If you know what circuit is abnormal, you can modify it and have a therapeutic effect. We're going to learn a lot about the brain and be able to help a lot of patients. Two people looking at exactly the same thing may see it in entirely different ways. When I look at this painting, I see the Eagle Nebula in the constellation Serpens. Nose, eyes, fur. I see my pet poodle, Tuffy. So why is that? Why do our brains at times interpret things we see or experience so differently? Nose. In this episode's Ears. profile, we meet a neuroscientist who's looking into the brain and discovering some people whose brains see the world in ways shockingly different. Tuffy. From the rest of us, Nebula. These men have come to this tower to free fall without any wires. From the top. Sound crazy? For neuroscientist David Eagleman, it's just another day at the office.